Great to have you with us. Now, the opposition National Democrat Democratic Congress's communication front is giving divided accounts about the audio that leaked allegedly being um, proceedings of an NDC's communication team meeting. Now, the communications officer for the party, Samuel Ofosu Ampofo, sorry, Samuel JMF has said that it is not the voice of his party chairman, Samuel Ofosu Ampofo. But first, let's hear the sound of that tape uh, in which Samuel Ofosu Ampofo is allegedly uh, making some statements related to the Ayawasu West War on violence. And uh, I want to assure that as long as I will the leader of the party, my, my approach to elections and security has completely changed from what happened. Wow. And we need to marshal all the human and material resources to move it. Uh, yesterday I was speaking with him and I said, look, uh, we have to get to it. Right? But probably one of our retired security people who can still drive and at the same time give you protection. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll go after them, yeah. sure, sure, sure. Okay. but we'll not go after them face to face. Mm -hmm. We'll have to use okay. tactical approaches <laughs> to, make, to make life very uncomfortable for some of them. We will target some people yeah. and we will let the people know that their life is in danger. Mm -hmm. And then once they know their life is in danger, mm -hmm. they themselves will be careful. As for that one, I want to assure you that mm -hmm. we will go all out. When it comes to this game, <laughs> that we are better than them. <laughs> and uh, we will not be vehemently opposed to it. But when who has started reflecting on the whole process, there are people who call me and say, initially we were angry with you. But uh, I mean, you have Chief Ashon Soka in our meeting saying, Chief, thank you. I said, well, I say, if you are not taking this decision, I don't know how my men would have gone back to Germany. <laughs> the issue is that they had brought the Kandahar boys. And the Kandahar boys <coughs> know our boys from Germany. So it was a targeted, you know, it was a targeted attack. So once they spot you, they invite them. So they would have done it. And then around that time, my people were so defenseless. And they have packed themselves in pickups. And so cordon off and helmet them was very, very easy. And they have not anticipated all these things coming. So it hasn't been easy. But uh, for me, how we take the battle from here is most critical. It's a question of mind game that we have come to play. We need, I was here because I thought that I should come and lift your spirit up and let you know that it was not a cowardice decision at all. It was a strategic decision which will benefit us. Now, that voice alleged to be that of Samuel Ofosu Ampofo in the tape, in the viral audio, I should say, is also heard saying that the communicator should, quote, take the EC chairperson to the cleaners and insult the Peace Council chair. And tell me, I have had calls from senior police officers who say that we salute you. And that. This is the time that we are going to unveil the real faces behind. The police are not happy yes. because they have been trained. They have a reputation to protect. You are going to bring people on the streets. You put police uniform on them and you are giving the police bad name. So there are several police people who are not happy. And you see, it is also shifting the support of the police back to us. Because you know, in 2016, the police were against us. So, that is that. The other aspect is the EC chair. You see, we must wage a relentless war on this EC chair. I mean, she only wants to see my because why he sees me. <laughs> but I have told him. Look at the statement that she made. First, our parliamentary candidate. Now, the National Communications Officer for the NDC, Sami Jemfi, however, says this tape is doctored and fake. The tape which is being circulated in the media is a doctored tape. It is totally fake. And we will entreat the people of this country to 
uh, treat it with the content it deserves. It has all the trappings of a diversionary tactic. And it is obvious that it is a desperate attempt by this government to divert attention from the latest expose by investigative journalist Anazarin Yawanaz, which has uncovered some appointees of this government as engaging in illegal mining uh, uh, corrupt activities of officials of government involved in the so-called fight against Galamse, extorting monies, collecting bribes, you know, and engaging in very despicable uh, corrupt acts. And that is why we are not surprised that mm. um, our friends from the NPP and elements in this government will introduce this red herring, totally doctored, fake tape uh, on the day that that video uh, is built to be premiered. So, Sami, you've heard the tape. Is that the voice of Sami Lofosuampo for your party chairman? I can tell you that it sounds like the voice of our party chairman. Uh, in fact, they allege that that was a national communication meeting which was attended by the national chairman. I am the chairman of the national communications team. I chair all his meetings. I know that indeed our national chairman has visited us. He visited us not too long ago. Um, but you see, let me tell you what is happening. You know, because this government is a sinking government because they are still the people of this country. We know how They've become a monumental failure relative to all their flagship promises and the expectations of the Ghanaian people. Hence, the untold uh, hardships, debilitating hardships that Ghanaians are going through. And so government has resorted to espionage by spying on political opponents. Not too long ago, the office of one of the senior most members of our party was broken into. We are aware that government, in collaboration with the national security apparatus of this country, have planted bagging devices at our headquarters and they are spying on us. This intel came to our notice uh, a few months ago. And since then, we've been taking steps, you know, to clean the office and all that. So what they do is that they spy on us, record meetings. And because they don't find anything indicting, anything damaging, you know, anything which seals their selfish political, you know, interest, what they do is that they slice the tapes, insert their own versions, and then with technology available today, clone the tapes as though, you know, the tapes, the, 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 the recordings are genuine. When? Right, you're still live on Join News today with me, Daniel Daze. Now, uh, Kweku Boahin, the Deputy Communications Officer of the NDC, has also spoken on this matter. But before that, let's hear lawyer Samson Ladia Yenini. You have, by Article 21 of this Constitution, you have the right, and it's a fundamental human right, to, to, assemble, to assemble and to association so people can have meetings, People can belong to groups. There is nothing illegal about that. In fact, it is elevated to a human right to every citizen of this country. But what is not allowed is for that association, for that assembly, to be used as a place or as a point to plan crime. This information elsewhere will first be in the hands of law enforcement and not in the hands of journalists and check what is going to happen. You will discuss this, people will come deny and the matter will die. Otherwise, where the matter ought not die because the people are clearly heard conspiring and planning crimes. You can point as many as three, four, five criminal activities that they plan to engage in. You had the question of the kidnapping people. If you take your time and analyze, if a group of lawyers, particularly 
um, attorneys who do criminal prosecution sit and analyze this, I can assure you that from what I have heard, they will come up with not less than 10 charges of crime against the persons who are in this voice. So law enforcement is the one that should have this, you know, uh, tape. If they don't have it, they are the ones who should be calling you this morning immediately, asking for the tapes. They are the ones who should be moving into action and looking for these people and asking the right questions and putting them before the courts for the right things to be done. Otherwise, what we do is that we leave, we leave these politicians to do these things and put this country mm. in harm's way. We can now hear the comments by the Deputy Communications Officer of the NDC, Kweku Buahen. The party accepts all what he said. Party members are happy about it. He met his party members. They are happy about his utterances. That is why they clapped at the point. It was a meeting of our communications team. We meet once every week. Bad people joined the meeting and recorded the discussion. Kennedy and Japan made portions of the audio available last week. What you hear today is the rest of them. This will not discourage us about the bad things happening in government. It's a communication meeting with myself, Sami Jemfi, and Afghan as leaders. We meet all our communicators to strategize our security and communication. Honorable Ofusuampofo joined us to motivate us. That is why you heard people clapping. That is why you heard people clapping. Because we are happy. If someone doesn't understand and want to bend the sea, we should go ahead. Deputy Communications Officer for the NDC there. Now, still on this matter, as you saw at the beginning of this bulletin, the New Patriotic Party, NPP, is currently addressing a news conference at the party's national headquarters where um, Communications Director Yao Bing Asamoa is answering questions of journalists. Now, they have said earlier uh, that the NDC has shown by this leaked tape or this alleged leaked tape that they want to subvert the rule of law. They want to visit violence on um, the country. They are urging all well-meaning members of the National Democratic Congress, NDC, to disassociate themselves from the statement uh, that are alleged to have been made by Samuel Ofosu and Popo. We will speak to our man on the ground, Parker Wilson, shortly. Um, but before that, some bodybuilders in Nima say the activities of well-built men who are engaged in political violence is worrying. They are supporting Joy News's call for these groups to be disbanded. Maxwell Agbagba has more. Well, we're here at the Don Fuzi gym here at Lima. Um, there's a lot of um, bodybuilding going on. A lot of the people here um, come here very in the morning to train. What I've heard is um, no pain, no gain. But I think I'll let go of this. Probably when I finish, then I'll be in appropriate, you know, attire to um, train um, for this purpose. Well, we've been speaking to them about our campaign to disband party militias, you know, um, now. We've also been talking about the perception and the notion um, out there um, that a lot of bodybuilders, people with big biceps, are actually engaged in violence. They, a lot of them are, you know, are members of um, political party militias, as you say, like the Hawks Invisible Forces. They've been debunking, you know, um, that perception, and they told us that they've also had that, but we're bringing the conversation of party militias here um, to find out from them also what they make, you know, um, of it. No, 55 years. 55 years. Well, he says it's 55 years. But how long have you been building? Building, you know, uh, 13 years now. 13 years? Uh, I'm started training. Okay, well, he said he started training 13 years, you know, um, ago. Um, but I'm sure you've heard about, you know, the invisible forces. What's it? Hawks, me. Yankee Kahon, what it is, Omonka. And as you see, yeah, Kase, Omungu. 
Sir, invisible forces, ni hawks, ni a dia, you don't say. Oh, eh, right, says Ugun. Eh, sir, Ugu, you're much of fun. You see, I must, I must say, Ugu, much of my life is a, oh, yeah, bad boy, and you're bad. Well, he says um, he is excited about the campaign to disband um, party militias um, because. Um, a lot of people, anytime they see um, bodybuilders, anytime they see people with big biceps, um, they think that they, they, they are violent. They think that, in his own words, they think they are bad boys, yes, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, and this, uh, well, he says that's not the case. Uh, but, much of you he protect your home for peace. Okay, who protects him for peace? Is it for health reason? And I say, say, I quite say, we are much of you. Me, I say, me, Monday. But with them, you want Ako, Menim, Ako, strongest via baby, and we could be. Okay, for competition. Competition. Okay. Well, he says um, he's engaged in bodybuilding um, because of competition and not for uh, for the purposes of um, violence. You see, since I'm not crowned, I'm not for who are bassa, no cook who say na. Yeah, at the end, I'm going to catch you. Oh, I got just a mabo. My training, but I'm catching just one one course of training. The age of 55 years and easy. Okay. I'm starting your training. No. Okay. Well, all that you say, politicians, you know, or that dying. And so, not too many we are. No, I can't, I can't see. And they come in Quadia and pay for one first come why. Nay, and co competition, nay, and yet, crab. Okay. Well, he says um, the politicians have been lying to um, them for a very long time, and he's advising um, all of the people engaged in, you know, um, party, um, uh, um, the party members of the party militia groups um, to rather channel their energies into, um, into competitions. He thinks that's the best thing um, to do. Interesting reports there by Maxwell Agbagba. And of course, this is still part of our campaign here at the Multimedia Group calling for the disbanding of party militia groups. It's been six days since President Ekufuado demanded that his party calls for a meeting with the opposition NDC to discuss the disbanding of these groups. And we are waiting on the NPP to reach out to the NDC and for steps to be taken in this direction. Remember, the hashtag is still disband party militias now. Now, in a related development, we take you back to the Ayawasu West Wagon Commission of Enquiry sittings. Now, um, when the commission was rising yesterday, Justice Emil Short said that they would resume tomorrow on Thursday. But before he did that, he ruled on a request made by Dr. Dominica Kotinga Ayine, who is a lawyer for Delali Kwesi Brimpo, NDC parliamentary candidate, and Sam Nate George, member of parliament for Ningo Pram Pram. That request was to allow um, Dr. Ayine to cross-examine witnesses who had spoken earlier and in their testimony had said incriminating uh, facts about um, Delali Kwesi Brimpo and Sam Nate George. This was just a short ruling. It's important to bear in mind the fact that this is an investigative body whose core task is to conduct a thorough, dispassionate, and accurate inquiry into the matters falling under its remit, pursuant to CI 111. In other words, the work of the Commission, unlike that of a regular court, is not to decide what the balance of rights and liabilities are between competing parties, and the rules of evidence do not apply in the same way and sense. Consequently, the evidentiary methodology of the Commission differs from that of a court in the sense that whereas the evidence led by parties in a court are, quote, party-led or centered, unquote, in nature, the evidence given and led before the Commission is Commission-led or centered, in quotes, given that parties do not appear before the Commission to test it of a selfish cause, but to rather that, that witnesses who appear to testify before the Commission do so to aid the Commission arrive at the truth in respect of the facts implicated in its mandate. In this regard, the request by a party to call a witness with a view to impeaching the prior testimony of the party may have the effect of converting the nature and ethos of the Commission's work and transform its public enterprise character into proceedings in defense of private rights.
This, this may further undermine the freedom to testify afforded all witnesses appearing before the commission as parties will now have worry about confronting persons who are aggrieved by their testimony. But speaking on top story, the lawyer whose request was being ruled on, Dr. Dominic Ayene, disagreed with Justice Short's interpretation of the commission's work. I disagree with all the reasons given, even though I am grateful to the commission for taking the time to deliver a reasoned ruling on this matter. Um, in the first place, the first reason that he gave, um, which is founded on his interpretation, I mean the Commission's interpretation of uh, Rule 12, Sub-Rules uh, 1C and uh, Sub-Rule 2, um, is to me not supported by the rules, the, 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 the rules, the rule themselves. I think that this particular option you know, uh, goes against the floodgates argument that the commission itself was making. Because at the end of the day, if they say I should submit questions, and the questions have, I mean, are submitted, supposing for the sake of argument that they agree that the questions, you know, are germane to their inquiry, and then they then go on to call, uh, recall witnesses. Other persons who have the same concerns will also exercise the same right, and they will be recalling witnesses ad infinitum. Okay, so I think that the commission should, I mean, um, um, adopt a procedure that allows cross-examination, but at the same time, limits the time allowed for cross-examination in order to expedite the proceedings. The Constitution grants a right of appeal to the Court of Appeal in respect only of final um, adverse findings contained in the report of the commission. All right, so we cannot do a preliminary appeal at this stage of the proceedings. But I also take the, the view that the commission is an inferior administrative tribunal um, that is subject to judicial review, um, you know, of uh, administrative actions under the constitution and laws of this country. And we may, I'm just saying this tentatively, we may look at the possibility of applying to the high court for a review of the decision of the commission. Dr. Dominic Ayene speaking on Top Story yesterday. We'll be joined in the studio by Justice Shrem Sai, himself a private legal practitioner, to give us his views on this matter. Um, Justice Sai, thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank you very much. Good in the first place, where do you stand, particularly on Dr. Ayene's reaction, saying that in the first place he does not agree with the commission? Yeah, thank you. I think the commission's ruling is on a head-on collision with the right to fair hearing, which is established or captured under Article 23 of the Constitution. Now, let's we'll appreciate this when we go back to the mandate of the Commission. Now, the Commission's mandate, or one of the mandates of the Commission, is to find out persons who are responsible for the violence and the injuries that occurred on 31st January. What it means is that it is possible that at the end of the hearing, the Commission may come up with names of individuals who should be held liable or responsible for those actions. Now, if you follow the commission's hearing, you will notice that the earlier speakers, especially those from the security agencies who relied on um, certain you know, intelligence to carry out the activity, they were very specific. They mentioned that they gathered information or intelligence that there were stockpile of arms in the house of the NDC MP aspirant. Then some of them also said that the, 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 uh, Sam George was leading a motorcade of macho men, the people we call vigilante or party militia, to the place for which reason they stopped and all that. These are specific allegations against these two individuals. And if not properly rebutted, will lead to what? They being you know, found as persons who were liable in the way for the action. That makes them persons of interest. And in fact, it is based on these testimonies that the commission itself invited them to appear. Now, when they came, the commission relied on these previous testimonies of persons to cross-examine them or to ask them questions. For example, they asked the MP whether that was his house, whether bullets were shot from the house and all that. And they asked um, Sam George similar questions about the previous, you know, what Dr. Ine was asking for. Simple. Saying that, look, you have brought people here who have accused me, and it is my fundamental right 
as we know as lawyers, that you have the right to confront a person, your accuser, face to face, and that is cross-examination. Mm. So mm. Dr. Ayana's argument is simply that give my client the opportunity to help you, the commission, by cross-examining these people as to what they have said mm. about me. Now, the commission says, well, we are not going to give you that opportunity because of A, B, C, D reasons. Now, we have heard this over and over again. The right to fair hearing is fundamental. As an administrative body, which the commission is, is supposed to give these rights to mm. us. Now, the commission right. seems to be saying that it will open the floodgates if we allow you to cross-examine you know, these people. It means that right. any other person may cross-examine mm. these people. But it is a question of whether you are willing or the commission is willing to sacrifice justice on the altar of what? Convenience or speed. Mm. That is a choice the commission has made. On, on the first point that you raised, in the first place, there are a number of persons of interest with this matter. The commission already has a number of people that it was going to call. It would be presumptuous to assume that the, Mr. Sam George and Mr. Delali Bimpon were called based on these persons' testimonies. Would it be? Would it well, we, 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 the commission uh, wrote letters to them. Mm. And in those letters, made specific, gave them the reason why they were invited. Mm. Apart from that, we could see. You see, at law, when you, you say... You saw these letters and the letters stated uh, that this is why they were being invited. Le, uh, let me just... Mm. When, you, when you, at law, when we say the intent of someone or a commission or a okay. person, it is based on what the person has done. We don't know actually what goes on in their mind. My point is, from the questions they posed to these individuals, mm. it was clear that they relied heavily on the previous testimonies. Mm. And I believe that even if these testimonies were not actually given, they were not going to call them anyway. Now, my, my point is, the commission has already, you know, after the ruling, Dr. Ine asked a very specific question, said, do I take this to mean that these, my persons or my clients, are not going to be, I mean, adverse findings are not going to be made against mm. them. And mm. I could see from the commissioner's, you know, demeanor and how he answered that, yes, these are not persons of interest, therefore adverse, you know, findings may not be made against them. And that itself raises another question. Whether the commission, even before it finishes its work, can you know, set some people free without further inquiry. So, so the question here is, what at all does the commission want? Now, I, I have a question on, that, on an earlier point you made. So a security couple comes to, make a t comes to testify, and that testimony seems to implicate an individual. That individual comes to testify gives his side of the story. Is it not then down to the commission to, in their own means, weigh the evidence before them and then look at whose testimony um, um, stands the test of, of, of uh, the commission? The, the work the commission is doing is a quasi-judicial exercise. In other words, they are going to determine people's rights and liability. And the law is straightforward on that. And there have been a long line of cases where individuals who have been indicted by commissions of inquiry like this have been punished and later set the whole commission's report aside near, in respect of them merely because they were not given the right to cross-examine. And these authorities are there for all to see. So it is very important, and you would, I mean, many, many legal practitioners and legal people you know, would tell you that the right to fair hearing in its full you know, length it's so important that it could actually render what the commission is doing a nullity at the end of the day. And but I was very I worried that the this appearance decision came. before the commission, is it not a fair hearing? No, Does it not constitute fair, fair hearing? Fair hearing is, I mean, to so allow the person to come, that is one. Give him enough, I mean, I mean give him the right to cross his hand. It's, in, it's, it's, it's integral, you know, to the, to the whole process of fair hearing. So, for example, if I want to dismiss you and... I just ask you to uh, uh, come and then you say something and say, well, I've heard you. Fair hearing goes beyond just listening to me. It's a process Con I mean, so with so many compartments. So if the commission is saying, and the commissioner also, I think being conscious of the danger involved, open a window, a window for them to uh, send in questions, questions for them to, but that is still not cross-examination. If I send the questions and I have a follow-up, so I have to send another question for the follow-up. 
And how does that even help the time issue? And how does that prevent the floodgate you know, question? Because if all the people who appeared are sending, sending questions, questions, and you have to ask, and they have mm. follow-ups. So I, I don't know how that window even helps the commission's own argument okay. mm. that they want to save time and avoid the floodgate. Mm. Right. The commission has sat for some seven days now. What are your general impressions of what you've seen? Well, my, my, impression, um, my impression about the commission is that um, first of all, it's a, it's a great work. Certain things are coming up which most people didn't know before that time, which means that the public is being educated, and we are all in our private homes passing judgment on how those who hold power on our behalf use those powers, especially the power of security. See, security is the number one, the number one duty of government to secure the people. Mm. When you f give them the, uh, that security, then we can aspire to other you know, things that mm. we want from government. And that is why, so if, if anything at all, this commission has showed us one thing, mm. that apart from the securities and intelligence agencies that we have, the traditional one, there is this uh, imprecise, amorphous you know, enterprise going on called the National Security Operative, where the policeman there doesn't actually take instruction from the IGP or the mm. police service, where the military officer there doesn't also take instruction from Bema camp, and where he seems to be accountable to certain people who also are not really accountable to anyone, and the, 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 the whole enterprise, and we have civilians who are in a way bearing arms, and the police officers there who we don't know, and, and because they wear masks, you won't even know who the police officer is and who the civilian is. And the, you see, this is the bottom line. In this country, no other person can arrest, stop, and search you unless the person is given power mm. by the state. The only people who have automatic power by the state are the police people. That mm. is why those individuals who are civilians, they don't have any business in chasing people, let alone beating them or arresting them. Okay. And this is the question that is coming up. That is how important the commission's hearing is. Okay. And at the end of the day, I would always say that when the commission is done with its work, I expect at least two things to come out. The commission should be able to tell us whether that national security enterprise, where right. they have armory and right. weapons, whether it, is, it should be kept or it should be disbanded okay. and sent back to uh, the traditional, you know. Okay. Now, the final thing that I probably want to see, maybe not, that you may have another question, but this is very important to, to me. We keep hearing these things about vigilantes. We keep hearing things about party militia, and we are on a campaign to disband them. Uh, answer this question. Why would you, a gentleman like yourself and I, why would we take the law into our own hands? That is what vigilantes do. Vigilantes are persons who believe... Take the law into their own hands. Yeah, why would you do it, that? It, it's a key question, Mr. Why would, I want to go into the... It's a key question, Mr. Shrem, sir. We'll leave that to linger on the minds of our listeners because uh, we'll have to wrap up this segment. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. Uh, Justice Shrem, is a private legal practitioner. You're still live on Joy News today with me, Daniel Dazen. Now, coming up in business, government with support from some local banks has set aside more than $50 million dollars to complete some abandoned housing projects in the country. Charlie.